And in this little segment, I wanted to share my joy and excitement. Truly, I have just hit the jackpot. Something that may seem small to some, but very exciting to me. The most exciting thing I have found in my research for some time. Typically, I share a different kind of research, as you all know. But this is my other passion, the law, and all the fraudulency that goes on within it. And how the more I study the law, the more I realize it is very beneficial to us. The only problem is we don't know it, and we don't know our rights. And this allows us to be tricked and trapped by governments and corporations who understand the system well. And what we find is when somebody else understands the system and shows their understanding and knowledge to these groups engaged in lies, typically they back off only because they realize you know the truth and it's game over. And this is the greatest rabbit hole I've ever gone down before. It originally started with our social security number and what is it, really? And I'm going to try to keep this short, just in case this recording doesn't take. But our social security number, again, in short, seems to come down to a bank account that is created at our birth, backed by our birth certificate, a certificate of stock. And once I realized this was a bank account, my very number, my unique social number, I naturally wanted access to this account. And I was watching a lot of different channels, many difficult to follow, and it was very early in this research and understanding. And again, this is just one branch of this very deep rabbit hole. But nonetheless, I continued my research and found that this was a actual bank account and all that we needed was a routing number and what was the routing number well that was the routing number to the bank and who was the bank well the bank was the federal reserve and originally people began punching these into paypal and pretty soon paypal seeming to be part of this cabal shut it down pretty quickly refusing transactions from these accounts and soon there unfolded a frenzy of people trying all different ways to access these accounts and I jumped on the wagon and ordered four new tires for my truck from Amazon and I punched in my routing number and my social and boom as if I had entered a credit card the logo of my bank popped up on the screen and my bank in this case being the Federal Reserve itself very official all the numbers were confirmed and Amazon gave me a guaranteed shipping date this account sailed through without a hiccup if it was not a real account it would not have run through the system if even an expiration date on a credit card is wrong it's not running through the system. And within two days, I had my Amazon account shut down. And this was a great proof to me. Later, I tried to open a stock account with the popular online firm E-Trade. Same thing, my very numbers of social security and this routing number to this non-federal reserve branch. And once again, Boom. Accepted. $1,000 in the account. Unfortunately, I did not take a screenshot of this. And being very excited and scared, I did nothing and let the money sit in the account. And it sat there for about 10 days. And finally, it was pulled back out. My account was not closed, but I ended up closing it, not having any desire to dapple in a rigged market. Much more excited about this account that we all have that is said to have several million at a minimum. 
and I used to watch a fascinating channel. But again, very hard to follow, perhaps 10 minutes of valuable information in a two-hour video, and one would need to watch dozens just to extract the essential needed information. But in a nutshell, in 1933, give or take, when we went off the gold standard, the United States went bankrupt. And now, with a system backed by nothing, the people became the value of this system. And every birth and every certificate creating value. And this channel that I used to watch would just read these old laws sitting in plain sight. And how amazing this system actually was. The very laws that existed. And how the people being the backing for this system would not be responsible for their debts. The debts would be paid by the treasury. And the more I researched, the more amazing I found this system to be. But once again, we just didn't understand it. And we were being played because we had no understanding of these laws and how to navigate them. And although I didn't give up on this account, I moved on to other things. The law and the words used in the law. What is called syntaxing. And this was created by a judge, David Windmiller. Fascinating. I encourage you to look into his work on the true and false meaning of words. And how everything in this system is based on contract. And if there is any fraudulency or lack of clarity in a contract, the contract is void. And if both parties don't understand the meaning of the words, the contract is void. And what I found through this branch of the rabbit hole is almost all contracts are void. If they use the language of Babel, which is what we use. And again, I continue to research this branch. But here now, getting to this point of this video, is another little branch, one of so very many. And this is just something very simple. And of course, all of these ideas on the law and the truth behind these laws are actually designed to set us free. And so here we're going to look at a little bit of law. But before that, I just want to explain a little bit more backstory. I kept trying to pursue any avenue in which I could financially find some kind of freedom. And once I did, something that I could share. It would be very easy. This has always been my quest in seeking truth. The more I realize we've been lied to, the more determined I am. And upon first entering this rabbit hole with this original channel that I used to watch, he was talking about these old laws from the 1930s. And one such section involve the creation of money and currency and how even people had the ability to do this and he showed us how to make currency not something that looks like a bill but something that looks more like a check and throughout this check citing all the laws that made this procedure perfectly legal old laws and old court decisions. And again, to keep this short, what made a check or even a contract or any instrument of that nature valid was a signature. And if you look, all checks have a signature, all loans, and all legal instruments. And it was ultimately our signature that made the money. And in short, when you went into a bank to get a loan, they would simply draft up this instrument and you would sign it and ultimately you would create it. Without your signature, this had no value. The bank could not create it without your signature, otherwise they would create it. But it was your signature that was needed to give this value. And ultimately it was you that created this loan, not them. And it's the same with credit cards and mortgages. And when you realize 
that it's you that's creating the money. And when you realize that all debts are forgivable because it's you that backs the system. And when you understand the laws, you can begin to use these tools and instruments in the same way that the people on the top do. And so here, this little letter verifies the fraudulency going on. And this fraudulency has to do with the credit reporting agencies being Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. And this letter will show you exactly how fraudulent the system is. And this letter was designed to send to the credit reporting agencies to dispute a negative mark on your credit report, which would in turn weaken your credit score. And these are very difficult to get removed, and yet when we look carefully, it's actually very easy once you call them out on their fraudulency. And this is a very, very simple two-paragraph letter written to this particular credit reporting agency and cuts right through the lies. And here I'll read it real quick. According to the Fair Credit Reporting Act, Section 609, and this is where it's all at right here, you are required by federal law to verify through physical verification of the original signed consumer contract any and all accounts you post on a credit report. So they are required to have physical verification of the original signed contract. So that's anything, that's a credit card. And so what this is saying is that they have to have the original signed document in their hands, the credit reporting agency, in this case Equifax, must have the original signed contract. And the bottom line is this, they don't have it. They could never possibly have every single contract, the original signed document, in some kind of an archive. It would be absolutely impossible in this day and age. And they know it and they just ignore it. And they are violating federal law and this Fair Credit Reporting Act. Otherwise, anyone paying for your reporting services could fax, mail, or email in a fraudulent account. So that's what they're stating, is that there must be verification. And so a lot of people send letters to these companies and these credit reporting agencies disputing the debt itself. And in this particular case, there's no disputing of the debt. There is simply asking for verification. And here we go. Here's the demands. I demand to see verifiable proof. An original consumer contract with my signature on it. That you have on file for all the accounts listed below. Your failure to positively verify these accounts has hurt my ability to obtain credit. Under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, unverified accounts must be removed. And if you are unable to provide me a copy of verifiable proof, you must remove the accounts listed below. And here we go. You list your accounts, and they have 30 days to respond to you. And it's said that some letters may need to be sent back and forth. They will try to resist and intimidate. And yet this is the absolute law. And you stand your ground, and it may take up to four of these letters but ultimately this is game over and just one little sliver of this monstrous rabbit hole and now by identifying their fraudulency this allows us the power to clean our credit at will to wipe our slate clean better than filing bankruptcy as I've mentioned in past videos and using your imagination, this is a way to tap into the system and the unlimited funds that are available with just this one understanding of the law and how these reporting agencies are abusing it. And that is our power. And that is all for now. I do thank you for joining me. 
please leave your comments below. I do hope to continue to share this research as it unfolds. Please like, comment, and subscribe.